Hello and welcome to this FISH BMS training video. In this video I'm going to look at three systems. And they're the autopilot, the terrain following radar and the forward looking infrared, infrared the FLIR. And I'm going to look at how they're related and how they can be integrated to give the pilot the best control of the aircraft and situations of high threat or poor weather or poor visibility or all three together. So we're going to focus on demonstrating the functions and limitations of the system through the simple flight plan uh, which will be at night. So we're heading off here at 4.30 in the morning, you can see, and we've got a flight plan from Yishan that passes through the Kotar range and brings us back around again. So note that the runway heading for Yishan is 080. So let's look at the prerequisites for um, being able to use infrared and terrain following radar because the autopilot system is pretty much widely available on all the, all the F-16 aircraft. However, terrain following radar and FLIR are not uh, commonly available. So if we look at the aircraft that we've chosen, we've chosen the KF-16C. This is one of the aircraft that allows us to use the sensors needed um, to do the terrain following and the forward looking infrared. And just to list out some of the aircraft that have uh, this available to them, the Block 32 and 40 EAFs, the normal Block 30 and 42, and the Block 52 plus the HAF and the KF-16 as we see we're using here. And also most of the um, Israeli aircraft, the F-16I and the Sufas. So if we look at the loadout we're carrying here, we can see We've got two pods under the wing and we've got our TGP selected. So for aircraft that allow us to use um, these two pods, the AN, AAQ 13 and 14, uh, once we select the loadout, both pods are loaded simultaneously. And the two pods together are normally described as the lantern. And we've got a targeting pod, the TGP pod, on one side and we've got the navigation pod on the other side. So one pod looks after the uh, forward looking infrared and the um, the terrain following radar and the other one is is used for the camera to um, enable coupling with the weapons for instance LGBs and uh, AGM 65s as we have on here. So note that we can't take these off when we have them on here because we've got weapons which are the weapons which are dependent on them and if I remove those weapons we can now take the pods off we can arm the aircraft with the pods without any weapons but you can see it can't be done the other way around so that's just by way of an important prerequisite for um, using these on your aircraft. So with that in mind, let's now uh, jump in the pit and let's start the jet and I'll go through the prerequisites needed um, to fire the three systems up. Okay, we're in the pit now and we've just started up the engine and the first thing we need to do um, or soon after we start up, we need to switch on our sensors because they take time to cool down. I'm going to go back to our avionics panel and power up our MFCDs so that we can see our sensors and then we're going to go back up front. Let's change over to FLIR and to our terrain following radar on the left MFCD and you can see that neither of them are on at the moment and the reason why is because we don't have our hard point switched on and we've got to do that by coming down to the sensors panel here and we click on the left hard point and we look back up at this we see now the symbology indicates that the that the sensor is actually being detected and it's showing up on the MFCD the first thing we need to do is switch it off on there and it says not timed out we're going to do the same thing with the train following radar OSB4 and you can see not timed out. Let's come over to the other side let's load our gated data cartridge here
and we see the TGP is exactly the same because that uses the right hand side hard point but as soon as we go down here and we switch it on we see now it's available but not timed out so all of those three now are on so just remember to make sure that the hard points are on although you'll do that as a normal startup sequence and the other thing that needs to be on is the radar switch needs to be in altitude mode which is two steps forward and this is important for our terrain following radar um, because we won't be able to detect the ground so once they're all done uh, those sensors are ready to go and I'm going to continue with starting up the aircraft and I'll see you back on the threshold of the runway when we're ready to take off okay hello and welcome back we're in the pit now and uh, on the threshold and pretty much ready to depart just do a final takeoff checks and before we take off we're just going to quick have a look a quick look at our sensors and make sure they're the way we want them um, I'm going to take this one out, the weapon page out, and we're going to place it with our FLIR. And we can see our FLIR is now ready because the not timed out signal is, our indication is gone. And also the same with our train following radar and our TGP. We'll actually switch that on if we want it to now. So we're pretty much ready to take off. I'm going to set to push the steer point two. Rolling. Rotating. Gear up and align for steer point two. So I'm going to use the autopilot now to take us on this current heading to steer point two and maintain this pitch. So we do this from the autopilot panel, which is called a miscellaneous panel. I don't know why. We're going to switch to there's two roll uh, there's two positions for the roll switch. One allows us to follow our current selected steer point and the other one selects uh, allows us to follow our heading bug we're going to switch to our steer point by clicking it switch down and on the pitch switch we can follow and uh, we can maintain the attitude hold in other words it will keep us at, in, at the inclined or decline angle that we're currently at or we can keep it at, at the attitude hold so we're going to choose the attitude hold here and we're going to maintain this pitch angle of up pretty much uh, five degrees here we're gonna <coughs> we're going to ascend to approximately um, 6,000 feet and then we're going to roll out so we're going to level out and we're going to level out using the autopilot and since I switched on the um, the autopilot um, from here from the miscellaneous switch I'm not going to use the stick at all I'm going to maintain the throttle percentage I'm going to pull back to about 90% on throttle and we're going to maintain that. So I'll be manually um, adjusting the throttle if we need it. Now we've gone past 6,000, so I'm going to roll out at the current altitude. So you can see once I switch the autopilot switch into the altitude hold, and the aircraft assumes a position, a, a position where we're not ascending or descending, constant altitude. Okay, now we're a little bit away from our steer point two and the next thing I'm going to do now is to switch our steer point into auto mode by using the dauber switch right after the steer point button on the ICP and press return to that and we can see the A at the end of the steer point number indicates we're in automatic mode and in this mode the the onboard navigation computer will switch to the next steer point when we overfly the current steer point it's not ideal because we end up overshooting and we end up um, then being slightly off the flight plan that we should be on. You can mitigate against this by by changing the steer point manually just before you reach it. 
it just takes a bit of um, a bit of time or a bit of practice to get an idea of where you should be doing this I normally do it at about uh, somewhere like uh, three miles so we're going to do it now and note that now the autopilot is maintaining our current altitude you can see there and it's turning on a 45 degree bank angle here into our next tier point I'm going to miss it by a little bit. You can see we're just overshooting ever so slightly. And now I'm going to look at, when we roll out, I'm going to look at the, the heading selection mode. And we do this by looking at the HSI. And we can see there's a heading bug here when we roll the, the heading um, rotary. You see the heading bug there follows. You see it there? So we're going to select that to the same direction that we're heading on, roughly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the heading mode. And we do this by clicking the roll switch forward fully. Now, the aircraft will make a slight adjustment because it's not exactly the same as the, um, the steer point heading direction. But the benefit of this is you can see the way we're slightly off on our our flight plan we can manually adjust it now once again without touching the stick I'm going to roll this to the left a little bit and the aircraft is going to follow so we're going to turn in towards that flight line a little bit and now I'm going to turn it back out and bring us back on our current flight path gone a little bit to the other side but you can see the principle so with the combination of these two buttons you can essentially manually control or you can use a steer point to control the direction. You can use the pitch control to control whether you're ascending or descending in a constant way or to fly at a continuous um, a fixed altitude. So now we're going to look at the FLIR. I'm going to switch on the FLIR from the FLIR page. And before I do that I'm going to switch the enable fly up mode button that should have been done at the startup process this is important and it means that your aircraft will fly up uh, at a very high G rate if uh, it encounters an object it can't as uh, it's not doesn't appear to be able to climb over using the terrain uh, following radar also important to note that the um, the terrain following radar won't kick in unless we're above 0.55 Mac there as indicated by our Mac indicator we're good enough there at 0.72 and I'm keeping my revs at 90% you can see it over here so I'm going to switch back to our steer point mode to make sure we stay on track I'll use the heading mode the heading selecting selection mode again when we come uh, close to landing so for the moment we're going to look at the uh, FLIR and we can see we have it selected on the screen here and we click it on by clicking OSP20 to operate it and we see an image on the screen now what we need to do is we need to mimic that image onto our hood and we do this by clicking on the brightness knob here rotating it up and let's rotate it up fully make sure our boat knobs are rotated fully and also there's a, a gain control here on the FLIR and make sure that's also fully forward so when we roll out now we're going to we're going to align the image the green image um, with the image on the ground the background image behind it and it's easier to do this by looking at some bright objects which are visible to both and we do this by clicking on the boresight switch which is switch 15 here OSB 15 and we can slew now the image left and right I don't want to do it left and right too much but you can see I can slew it up and down and now you can see some background of the real ground and I'm going to make those coincident so that looks good so essentially what you've got to do is you've got to make sure the overlay between the real image and the um, the created image look the same 
and then you switch off the boresight mode. And once you, that's done, we actually don't need this image anymore on the screen, so we can use our normal radars uh, for that. We're coming up, up towards steer point 5 now, and we're going to now look at the terrain following radar. We'll switch on to terrain following radar. So before we do that, let's um, let's look at how we can adjust the view on this while we're going. It's going to we're going to go into a bank turn now. And if I if I press the MS up, you can see the image shifts to the left. So in a really dark night, you may not be able to see anything, and this allows you to turn a few degrees into the turn in advance of the aircraft. If I hold that switch up, and I use the uh, cursor to move it around I can I can also look down and look left look right a few degrees just enough to be able to give me a better um, better indication of what I'm flying into so to say that again you hold the DMS up and use the cursor to slew left right up or down So we're going now into the terrain following radar, select it on the left MFCD, and you can see there's options here for normal, LPT, standby, and weather. In LPT mode, um, it's limited, and we can't use our steer point, the autopilot down here, when we're doing that. In weather mode, it's, um, it takes account of the weather and allows you to fly in poor visibility and in rain. And that weather switch is accessible from the ICP also. I'm not sure why we can't go back to normal mode from that, but it allows you to switch very quickly to weather mode, but not, not very quickly out of it. We've also got an altitude uh, selector here on the right-hand side, and we're going to select 1,000 to start with. We're currently 5,600. So we're going to select uh, 1,000, and we're going to now switch it on by switching on the normal mode. And now we get the symbology up. Now at the moment, nothing is happening uh, because we haven't actually activated it. And you can see on the miscellaneous panel again, above the pitch button, we can see the advanced mode shows standby. Now this is actually a button that we can press. And when we wish to switch into the terrain following mode, we'll switch, um, we'll switch this advanced mode into active. Now currently I can go out of the altitude hold mode and we can manually descend and we can see as we start to adjust the aircraft too extremely we're going to get some um, some limits and indications and that indicates that the system is working correctly so I'm going to just level out here close to 2000 and I'm going to switch into the FLIR mode properly now So activate now takes us down. So we're now being taken down. And if we had the altitude, uh, if the pitch button in either of the autopilot modes, they will be forced back in by this press depression of this button. They'll be forced back into uh, the center position. So this indicates that it's the terrain following radar that's controlling our altitude and not, uh, not the, the, uh, the autopilot pitch control. So we're going to continue down. We've, we're in a hard um, mode, which is the most accurate. It's the best to follow radar. Uh, and we're going to go down to 500. Best not to try and dive down to from 5,000 feet to 200 feet because the system may not be able to um, um, d do that aggressive maneuver. So it's safer to come down. But you can see we're, we're gently making a turn. We're following our steer points. And once again, I haven't touched since we've since I started autopilot after taking off. I haven't touched the controls on the aircraft. So I'm going to come down now to 300. Some roads and buildings there, and you can see the way the T, the FLIR is lining up pretty nicely there. And we have the symbology here indicating the terrain as the radar sees it in, in ahead of us. We're now finally going to, down to 200. <coughs> and 
and we're steer point seven so our final steer point should be steer point eight I think actually steer point seven I think well, I think our um our, our takeoff runway is here and that's it here so now I'm going to I'm going to use the I'm going to go back into the heading mode I'm going to change the heading bug around and we're going to use manual navigation to come back to our runway I'm going to come up to a thousand feet which makes it easier to see where we're going pull up 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 okay so we're flying over the runway and I'm going to change our course indicator to 080 which should have been done at takeoff that shows us the direction we should be traveling in so I'm going to take a right turn now and I'm going to go parallel let's just drive out for a couple of miles from from our last steer point let's go back to steer point 7 and change our change out the auto it's manual so we maintain a uh, position on steer point seven so I'm currently four miles out from steer point seven and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a right turn which will take us on a kind of a downwind leg I'm going to do this by rolling the heading bug. So bring it in line with the heading 080, which will give us a downwind um, direction. And we're going to now be tracking away from the airbase. Once again, there's no stick movements here. It's all been done through the autopilot. And we're using the terrain following radar to keep us low. So we're now tracking away from 0 I'm going to go for a couple of more miles and then we're going to start turning in and we're going to intercept um, the heading into 080. Now it will be slightly off from an ILS and I don't have the ILS details thumbed in but when we get a visual we can take over manually and uh, do the landing that way. So let's start rolling in now. So I'm going to go on a crosswind leg. Which is almost north. 80, 90 is Okay, so we're now um, heading towards the the glide slope, you could say, and as we get close, we're going to start uh, rolling in a little bit more, because we don't want a hard, we don't want to have to make a hard turn. So I'm now going to start intercepting at a shallow angle. So it started to roll. You can see the course deviation indicator started to roll. We're probably a little bit overshot here. And I'm going to push a little bit further.
So I'm looking for the threshold up there. six miles out so we should be good there it is so let's switch our terrain following radar off stand by and probably gone a little bit too fast it rakes fully out <coughs> I bleed off some speed. Yeah, we're going to have to go around again. Anyway, you can see by um, using the, nav the navigation, we got ourselves pretty close to the runway, and what you could do is uh, overfly the runway and um, then make a, a visual landing after that. I'm just going to. I'll make a manual approach in here. Finish this off. But I've pretty much covered what I need to or what I wanted to show you uh, with the autopilot train following and FLIR. So um, this is just going to be uh, a landing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Um, it's worthwhile reading the documentation on it in both the DASH and the BMS flight manual. Uh, there's a good bit of information about all the systems and how they work. And as usual, feel free to leave any comments. Until next time, thanks. <laughs>